Hello, my name is Chris Grossniffel, and we're doing a class on fire hose um, and the basic components um, of fire hose. Um, it's the topic that I've chosen to do for this class. And um, up on the screen um, is what I would first like to mention as far as the class roster, um, if we have one. Uh, the exit plans, if something was to happen, um, we had an emergency or something like that. Where the restrooms are located, of course, men and women. Um, why are we taking this class? And there is going to be a test at the end of this presentation. The objective of this class is to explain the basic fire hose characteristics and which also entails the construction types and the common configurations of the hose that we use um, each and every shift. And we also want to describe different causes and the prevention uh, for hose damage, um, what the types are, how we can prevent that from happening. And we want to first explain the basic fire hose characteristics. Uh, so we have supply and, a, and attack hose. Um, the simple definition of each, the supply hose is what we use from the fire hydrant to the truck, which is how we supply the truck, and then it's also how uh, the end result is to have water at the end of the lines as well. And the attack lines, of course, is what we use on the inside and outside of the structure that we're trying to put the fire out at. Um, supply hose is typically uh, three inch and five inch lines, um, either or, sometimes both. Um, here, um, at my current apartment, we like to use three and five inch hose so we get as much water um, as possible uh, to our trucks. And the attack line can range from inch and three quarter um, to two and a half as far as hand lines and you can also use other lines such as three inch and again the two and a half for the bigger appliances that we use such as a blitz fire or a ram or things of that nature. Um, so the common construction um, of the hose it's flexible, it's watertight, um, smooth rubber or neoprene lining um, it's what is inside of the outer cover also called the jacket um, the common configurations there's a single jacket a double jacket rubber single jacket and hard rubber or plastic non-collapsible the non-collapsible um, you typically see on um, like your five inch or your bigger hose lines um, that are Again, really heavy to pick up, and you probably won't be able to once they're down on the ground. Um, how we get the hose size um, of each of our lines, such as a two and a half or a three inch, four inch and three quarter, is actually the um, the coupling that is inside right there. Um, that is how we get that. That's the internal diameter. And the fire hose couplings are used to make connections to hose and equipment. Um, so we have different types, um, such, as, such, such as a stores, which uh, it doesn't have the ridges like in the previous slide, um, which we'll also go over that when we go out um, to the trucks and take a first-hand look at the hoses. Um, the standard that it goes by is the NFPA 1963. Um, every department um, has access to the NFPA standards um, and the hose couplings are used um, to connect basically as much um, hose as you can to make the attack or make the supply um, that you need to because um, sometimes we can't control how long a driveway is or how long the distance between the house and the hydrant is we need to have the capabilities of um, having as much as maybe five or six hundred feet of uh, supply hose for example we need to have a way to connect all that um, and then again we also need to have the 
correct connections uh, for FDCs and commercial properties as well, um, which goes back to the couplings that are used. So the threads I was talking about earlier that I started to talk about, um, the thread side where you actually see them right here is considered the male and um, the other end that does not have the threads that you're able to see is the female. And um, the female side, the smooth side with the bumps um, is actually able to swivel um, and it also allows you to um, make that connection a little bit easier without having to twist up the hose that is able to swivel so you're able to make that smooth connection um, without as many hiccups hopefully. Um, and the second area right there is also smooth. Um, most of us have heard the phrase smooth bump bump to the pump and that's where it comes comes from and um, if you if you do get lost uh, in a structure, that comes in handy as well. So the couplings have other parts, um, including like different cut sizes and gaskets. The indicator uh, is that little cut out the little ridge right there. Um, the cuts, which are also known as the Ridges that I mentioned earlier, they are really sharp and well, especially when they're brand new. Uh, I have cut a few fingers from them from having to mess with new hose. Um, and again, it just shows um, the other indicators that are on the other side and or on the bigger hose. They might be a little bit larger than some others. So these are also um, the old school, uh, if you will. Um, that I was able to research. Um, some of these are called the rocker lug, the recess lug, and the pin lug. Um, here in my department we don't uh, come in contact with these very often. Uh, we might when we're doing um, some work with some of the other cities um, and counties that we neighbor if we ever have to help them. Um, the stores that I mentioned earlier, they don't have any of the ridges. You don't have, um, you don't have to twist them as much. Um, normally it's like a three-quarter turn and it locks into place. Um, on the bottom one, um, is the stores. And, um, those typically have, uh, two buttons on either side that you have to physically press down and twist, but it locks into place after you do that. And the quarter turn that I mentioned to begin with of this slide, um, they lock into place when you literally do a quarter turn, and quarter turn coupling. So the first question, what are the two types of coupling seen um, on the apparatus here in Cobb County? Um, so the two types of couplings um, is a traditional with with the ridges and then the um, other um, type of coupling is the stores coupling um, those typically um, is what we see and the second learning objective um, is to describe different causes of fire hose damage and prevention so when I first think of that um, the first thing that comes to mind is the slices, the rips, the brazens, uh, crashed and cracked. Those are typically the ones that you would see as far as mechanical damage. Um, and as we all know, we're not very gentle with our hose because they are made to withstand um, everything that we put them through as far as having to drag them in and out of the houses, drag them on the roads and the couplings getting scuffed up, they're made to do that at the same time, um, these things are going to eventually happen. Um, and you hopefully will not have a failure, but they can cause failures in the hose as well, which is why we do our hose test. Um, and so there are many ways to prevent mechanical damage. Um, you can avoid contact with rough, sharp objects. You can protect the hose with a roller uh, or a folded salvage cover. 
Um, you can clear the broken glass from window sills before you go in. So this is typically seen when you do uh, something like VEIS where you have to typically clean out the window um, and you have a hose line in hand on the ladder. So not only do you have to worry about having your balance and skills with the ladder and the hose, you have to make sure that you're doing everything you can to protect that hose as well. Um, so you can also prevent vehicles from driving over the hose. Um, some of this can be prevented um, more times than none, but uh, sometimes it just has to be done. We have to be very careful. Um, and for example, if we know a vehicle has to go over um, a supply line, for example, um, it, it'll, it'll help tremendously, especially with five inch, if we shut that line down, if at all possible. So it doesn't damage the hose and or the vehicle as well. Um, and you use hose ramps or bridges. Um, I know a lot of departments don't typically have those in their trucks anymore, but they are still out there. Um, and there's many ways to prevent, um, many more ways to prevent, um, such as uh, opening and closing slowly to avoid water hammer. We all know about water hammer. Um, if you pump the truck for any amount of time, um, so that's. That's a big one. Um, and you can also use chafing box, avoid excessive pressure, deploy away from debris, um, change position of folds, um, clean hose before reloading. Um, all, these, all of these are simple ways um, to prevent simple but easily um, lost uh, in our mind that we don't always think about, uh, but we need to. Um, thermal damage um, is also um, something that of course happens especially with our hose being exposed um, even while they're stowed away on the on the trucks themselves not not every fire engine uh, here and in other places um, have hose covers um, on the hose bed and things of that nature and of course when we're out training uh, or actually on a job um, they do get um, into um, contact with the heat and or cold, um, for that matter, um, and with the flame inside the house as well. Um, it can char, melt, weaken, um, and dehydrate the linings because, again, um, we do have that jacket around the hose, but um, we do not want the inside linings to dry out, if you will. Um, preventing thermal damage um, can be challenging once again, like I uh, said earlier, uh, but we have to do what we can. Um, organic damage to fire hose can weaken the jacket um, and lead to ruptures such as mildew and mold, mold excuse me. Um, so we have to make sure that we clean our hose after we use them. And I know we might not want to, but we need to um, also try to see if we can roll out the hose to get all that water out um, when we're ready to dry them. So like I was saying about washing, um, it, it's, it's as easy as getting a bucket soaking water with a brush and just scrubbing um, on each side of course. Um, So it's, it's as easy as that. Just make sure that you rinse off um, all the soap because that can become an issue as well if you don't rinse it off like you should. Um, and they do make um, hose washers as well uh, if you're fortunate enough to be able to use those. Uh, many types of chemical damage may occur because of what we do, what we may come in contact with, especially on hazmat calls, for example, petroleum products, paints, acids, alkalized battery acid, runoff water, which happens uh, quite often, and rain. Um, rain, uh, with everything going on, rain can um, be considered a chemical because of what it can potentially be mixed with that's out um, in the area that you're in. Um, Preventing chemical damage requires the following specific cleaning practices. You avoid chemical exposure. You scrub, wash contaminated hose lines. You test the hose periodically. 
um, he's disposed um, of the hose according to the local SOPs um, that your jurisdiction has. Corrosion weakens or destroys the metal hose parts. Um, I actually um, was able to learn this firsthand from a firefighter here. Um, and so what happens is, is that when oxygen is introduced, um, it, can, it can actually cause the coupling to fail um, and break um, when, when it's mixed with things like zinc. Um, and the aluminum, aluminum coupling um, can also have oxidation um, and becomes more resistant. Um, which we do not want to happen. Alright, so age deterioration is caused by leaving a hose and apparatus for a long time. Um, you can remove and replace hose loads periodically. Reload loosely with new folds removed uh, from the tower once you dry them. That's super easy ways to for prevention. One of the different causes um, of fire hose damage that we have discussed. So we have organic, uh, we have mechanical, um, those, those are the two major ones. Um, your mechanical um, are things that inevitably we do or um, something actually physically happens to the hose, um, such as the rip repairs. And the organic is something that happens naturally. Um, such as mildew, um, things of that nature. Um, okay, so now we have the summary. Um, so hopefully we've learned the basic fire hose characteristics, the common construction types, common configurations, the different coupling configurations, uh, the many different causes of fire hose damage, understand the different prevention methods and the consideration for those methods. Um, so that's the end of the PowerPoint. Um, and if you follow me, we're actually going to take a look at the hose real quick. I know I'm running a little bit over um, what we're supposed to. So here on the cross lays, we have um, the two inch and three quarter lines and um, and all I wanted to show you is that no matter if it's an inch and three quarter or a three inch or two and a half like we have here, you will have those ridges that we were talking about on the hose. And there is your indicator right there. So when you're going up to make that connection, um, it's a lot easier that way. Um, this is actually what we use um, on a high rise. Um, is what that's simulating. Um, and yeah, that's the basics, the very basics of a fire hose. I hope you enjoy.